afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sammy, and I'm the program director for Infocom Asia. First of all, I'd like to extend a ver very warm welcome to all of you here today for taking time to join this webinar. Especially, I'd like to thank our association partner, uh, ELET, e Learning Association of Thailand, for co-hosting this webinar and supporting the Infocom Southeast Asia show. The topic for today's webinar is the future of e-learning. We're going to have a keynote address by Mr. Supa Chai, Chairman of Digital Council of Thailand. This will be followed by, by a panel discussion on e-learning strategies. The plan is to, is to conclude the webinar at 2.40 p.m. Thailand time, after which we would like to invite all of you to spend some time exploring the AV solutions for the education sector in, South, in Infocom Southeast Asia website. All right, without any further ado, I'd like to invite our keynote speaker, Kun Supachai Jiara Vano, Chairman of Digital Council of Thailand for the session. Kun Supachai has been a member of the Thai government's independent committee for educational reform and president of the United Nations Global Compact Network Thailand since 2017. He's also the senior vice chairman and CEO of CP Group, one of Asia's leading conglomerates that consists of over 100 companies operating in 21 countries across a wide range of sectors. Kunsupa Chai, it's really a great honor having you join us here today. Over to you. Thank you. Um, again, uh, Sammy, thank you very much for the introduction. And um, I would also like to uh, uh, thanks the uh, e-learning association of Thailand, Kimarin, uh, for inviting me as uh, one of the speakers today. And also, uh, you know, uh, my sincere appreciations to the Infocom uh, to host such uh, important topics today on the e-learning, future of e-learning. Thank you. Yeah, um, I would like to uh, go through uh, some of the slides I have prepared here today. Um, can I have the next slide? Again, the, um, certainly we know that the world is facing, you know, three major challenges. Again, this is apart from or uh, this war and political uh, environment that have been going on. One is the uh, so-called the um, capital inclusive or equality. And second uh, is in the area of digital transformation, which have the impact throughout the, the whole economy and every industries. And third is uh, regarding the climate change uh, and sustainability. So these are the three world challenges that we are facing. And the first two, especially uh, in terms of um, equalities, you know, the uh, capital inclusiveness, uh, together with the digital transformations. These are the area that, uh, um, you know, the, the, the answers or the key success factors that are inevitable is about how we build on our education system and you know, how we actually have to uh, reform our education system. It's being disrupted, but actually it's, I'm looking at it in more of the, the ways of being enhanced it tremendously to the, the digital uh, transformation and all this um, technology. Um, when you talk about equality uh, and capital inclusiveness, this also, um, uh, depends heavily on how our younger generation would evolve um, and how they be able to um, have the chance or e equal chance of choosing their way of uh, contribution to the, the economy and to the society. And next slide, please. So uh, definitely all industries are being disrupted and transforming to the digital transformation. This is a big challenge. And uh, it would not exclude the, the education industry. 
and looking at uh, how it's being the rate of uh, the industry being disrupted, definitely the media and entertainment, you know, such as uh, Netflix, Disney, and you know, many others, uh, digital media like Facebook, Google, they, they have been disrupting the whole media industry. Traditional media industry cannot uh, uh, more or less uh, stay where they are, they were before. And then retails, telecom, and you know, financial service. Um, education is actually coming up fast in the list. It's number six. But I, I, would, I would say that the importance of the education or e-learning, uh, the importance should be number one. Because I think that is uh, what is going to take uh, us to, uh, into the next generation and how we solve all those three challenges. Uh, capital inclusiveness, digital transformation, and the sustainability issue we are facing. Next slide, please. Now, um, again, this is, uh, you know, how I looked at how we actually um, uh, transform principles of transformation. And this apply uh, directly into the educational reform. Um, so first is, is all this, uh, the transparency, especially the KPIs. What are actually the, the new KPIs that measures the e-learning? What are the, the new key success factors? What are the KPIs derived from the transformation strategy? Um, I think every country uh, down to every schools need to change or add it uh, into their, how they measure themselves. And um, not only that they, uh, how they measure themselves, but how can we make it transparent to the public to be able to see the progress of those transformations, uh, especially in the e-learning area. Second is market mechanism. So we need to be able to engage uh, the parents, the communities, the, the public sectors, the private sectors uh, into, uh, into the whole market mechanism, how we actually drive education reform. I'll talk more about, about the, the, this area. And in the third um, principle, a transformation principle, is regarding the, uh, the talents within the industry, such as the school principal, such as teachers, their abilities, their roles, their, you know, their understanding of uh, the, the evolution of education system. Uh, fourth is, you know, as we all know, how to be, uh, how the school and all these digitalizations can support the child-centric development. So it is, it's not about how the child will, will learn each subjects, but how each of the subjects can actually enhance the child's interests and abilities. So that, that is the child-centric. And the, um, the fifth is the, regarding how we apply technology, especially uh, digital technology, digital infrastructure into the school system. Next slide. Now, um, in terms of uh, the transparency, uh, how the public, this is again a, a, a very starting point of whether or not we have the, the right cockpit in terms of our education and how we are measuring ourselves uh, from the 2.0 education system which is more one-way communication and learning into the 4.0 um, education system. Or we, we usually talk about uh, smart school, for example, smart communities. So how can we actually be able to change or add it all these different KPIs, which also uh, should include it, um, the, the, the ethical values, the cultural values, that helps uh, the sustainability for the, for the uh, social as well as the uh, economics as we move forward. 
Um, so those KPIs have to be embedded. We did uh, try this uh, under the Connect ED um, uh, foundations, which actually is a, uh, evolved from the PPP projects with the Educate Ministry of Education. Uh, we have been working on this project for already over uh, five years and um, is involved uh, right now about 2 million students um, and hundreds of thousands of teachers. So again, the, all these KPIs are being tested and I will show you a bit more uh, in the presentation. Um, the student report cards certainly is, uh, is something which also should be, should be respectful in terms of the uh, uh, privacy, but at the same time, transparency between the teachers, between the schools and the parents. So how to involve parents into the development of the, of the students. Uh, in fact, uh, the students spend most of the time in the family institutions. They spend a lot of time in the family itself and they, they learn social skill and academics. Um, expertise in the school. So, so the two have to work together instead of just leave the student at the school and expect the, the development to be uh, at its best. Please. Now this is just the, uh, the example of the outcome under the Connect the uh, foundations. We are working with about 5,000 schools in public school in Thailand. Um, as, these are the, the, the measurements over the new KPIs uh, over the past um, four to five years, starting in 2017. Uh, this is the, again, the, uh, the score uh, for the school in terms of their levels of developments from what we call uh, developing, fair, good, great, and excellent. Now, what's, what's the difference between great and excellent? Uh, Great school and excellent school mean that they actually innovate and come coming up with uh, uh, innovations in education that can be replicated around the country. So um, we actually have been very successful. All these uh, public school are in mostly in the rural areas. They are a chart of the uh, infrastructure and uh, teachers and contents many other things. So when we started in the first year, uh, as a result of the KPI, we only get up to 1.26, as you can see. Um, but as we evolved, it's, it, there's a fast evolution as we, we're moving all this uh, digital infrastructure into the school, and we plugged in the, um, um, the representative from the private sectors uh, to work with the school principal uh, for what uh, their needs are. And in fact, uh, in terms of transparency, we requested all the school to, uh, to report all of these scorecards on the internet. So the communities, the public, the parents can see where the, the, you know, the, the school that children goes to, uh, went to um, stands among other schools. So um, again, this, this is uh, very much um, uh, that in terms of transparency of the information, it will engage both the parents and the public. So it's very important uh, part of, uh, of the transformation. Um, as you can see here, we started to uh, get to the point that we are not moving or developing as good enough. So the score start to get stagnant at levels of the three now we are at 3.15 and we are thinking about, again, reviewing uh, the KPIs because again, uh, we feel that we need to uh, uphold the standards uh, in terms of the school development. At the same time, uh, how can we actually uh, develop further uh, into the, the education reform? And one of the keys area is, uh, is, is, is moving into the, the, the pillar number five, and that is the digital infrastructure. Um, in terms of the public school in Thailand, most of the students from grade one to grade nine 
from grade nine to grade 12, uh, they actually do not, most of them, I think I would say 98%, 99%, the student don't have computer. They don't have computer notebook. So it is very difficult uh, to compare all these public school uh, students uh, with the um, you know, inner major cities students who, are, who, who their parents are more affordable and they are more digital literate since they are young. Um, so this is one of the efforts that we are looking to actually enhance the digital infrastructure um, into this, into this uh, Connect ED schools and hopefully to all the public schools in Thailand. Um, and we go move on to the next slide. Um, another, another KPIs uh, that actually help engage everyone uh, is about the advancement of the ICT scale. Now, this is not only in the, the basic education system, but we are talking about the national levels of how we can uh, achieve the so-called future workforce. And uh, certainly uh, the basic uh, ICT skill or digital uh, literacy, um, you know, the, the target uh, or the proposed target is to get the basic to 52% and the advance in terms of uh, programming and software to the 6% of the, of the workforce. Now, um, as you know, uh, this is again, uh, not a really high KPI. The 6% really come from uh, benchmarking against, for example, country like South Korea, uh, Singapore, you know, they, they are, their levels of uh, advanced ICT skill uh, are at 7%, 8%, for example, as you can see in these slides. And Malaysia actually uh, set forth the target to be at 11%. So I think uh, certainly Thailand need to also uh, adopt a, a higher um, percent in terms of uh, penetration, in terms of our digital literacy and digital skills. After the next slide, please. Now, when you talk about just 6% in the advanced skills, uh, you already talked about 3 million uh, population base. And certainly in Thailand, we are now only producing 40 to 50,000 uh, ICT graduates a year. And definitely there are ICT talents within the, across the industries, but most of them, or most of their skills uh, need to be reskilled, upskill and reskill. So it's, it's, this is something which, uh, which is a big uh, task uh, to really see that we have a, a digital workforce, a future workforce uh, at different levels. And the number is, uh, is, is a big number. Uh, and we need a, you know, a real ecosystem to do that. And, and that is the uh, e-learning. So e-learning will not apply only to uh, the basic education or high, high level education, but it's also apply into how developed we developed our uh, future workforce. Um, and then move on to the, the next slides. In terms of market mechanism, as I mentioned, with transparency, with the awareness of the market from parents to uh, corporate uh, private sectors and including the public sectors, uh, like the government itself, Without the transparency of the information in number one, Pela, uh, we will not be able to engage the market in such a way that uh, everyone and every sector should join hand and move towards uh, the, uh, this education, transformation in education and transformations in you know, our industry and our workforce. One of the uh, initiatives uh, I would like to cite the example we have taken is crowdfunding. So the objective of the crowdfunding uh, you know, is to engage the public 
especially in the in the communities and in the local area, to support the, their, their public schools, the schools that they uh, they have uh, graduated from, including the school that they send their children to. So um, this is uh, one of the the key initiatives, one of the uh, uh, certainly a main objective is for every child to have a computer with the accessibility. So uh, let me take the example, under the uh, 5,000 schools with about 2 million students, in order to have these 2 million students have access to computer, uh, again, the computer could ordered, be ordered by the schools and went to the students. Um, you are talking about uh, a budget of uh, 300 million US dollars. So about 150 US dollars per notebook with the capabilities to get the connectivity with the 4G and 5G, for example, in those areas that don't, do not have the fiber access. So um, that, that, that kind of budget uh, would require both private sectors, government sectors, and also the, uh, all the, the public sectors, the people, to, to join hand and drive the computer to every student in, in, in this particular uh, project. But if you look at in Thailand, we actually have more than 30,000 public school and with around 7 million uh, students in the basic education system. So that's still uh, uh, even a, a, big, a bigger goal if we're gonna go to 7 million. Uh, but we need to, uh, in this case, we wanted to demonstrate that with the strength of the private sector combined under the uh, Connect ED foundations, if we can make the example, then the government could actually replicate the same uh, kind of digital infrastructure um, for, for all the students uh, throughout the country. So I think this is the, you know, what we are aiming for. Um, now, market mechanisms is, is not only uh, how we involved uh, parents, private sectors, communities, um, but also uh, how the industry, how the private sectors uh, actually uh, on the voluntary basis engage um, so-called the change agents into the school system. In this case, we introduced so-called ICT talents. Uh, one, one ICT talent uh, uh, dedicated from the private sectors um, are centered to center at one school and serve another four schools. So one ICT talent to help around five schools. And again, this is uh, not only uh, maintaining the system, but it's also mean uh, teaching the teachers and teaching the students to use uh, all this uh, hardware and software, including digital media, and how best to utilize uh, the connectivity in the best interest of education. So right now, for example, we have more than 1,500 ICT talents. Uh, working with 3,600 schools, we still have more to go because we cover about 5,000 schools. And we also um, uh, have these volunteers from the private sectors called school partners. The school partners, uh, right now we have 1,300 school partners. Uh, it, they actually work in a similar manner um, and they are covering uh, multi-schools but working in group. So uh, each of the school partners looking after, uh, you know, four or five schools, but at the same time, they're also working as a team uh, by the district area. And these are, you know, um, all the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, management levels, the, uh, the younger generations who wanted to contribute, uh, have the experience, uh, you know, to look into how we actually be able to uh, improve um, the school system and being the assistance 
to the uh, school principal. At the same time, they also do the survey for all these key KPIs. This is this become a third party survey. Um, and at the same time, they also are the advocates of the budget that will be funded by the private sector uh, to support the school uh, shortage in their um, infrastructures, contents, and including accessibilities. Next slide. Um, the the um, market mechanism in this case, um, I would like to cite a, a really, really uh, macro and big uh, uh, ecosystem. And that is the tech startups. Uh, imagine in Thailand, uh, we have only about 1,000 tech startups. But in Singapore, we have about, uh, there are about 50,000 tech startups. If, if Thailand could actually uh, aggregate 10,000 tech startups, okay, um, we, would, we are talking about if, if each startup have 50,000 uh, innovators and workers, we are talking about half a million of workforce being built on a very agile ecosystem and being funded um, and being tested over their abilities and their uh, marketabilities. It's almost like a new research and development uh, infrastructure for the whole economy. Now, if we can enhance it to 20,000 tech setup and in average 50, uh, 50 people in the one tech setup, you're talking about 1 million tech talents and related. That, that also uh, becoming a platform uh, that not only are um, aggregating the, uh, um, the talents uh, in, in the tech area and digital area, but it, it is also a, a, a big uh, platform for the new graduates. Now, when we talk about the Thai tech setup, it doesn't mean that it, it have to be a Thai, but it could be a, a multinational registered in Thailand, for example. So all the talents uh, within the region and even uh, around the globe could come work for the tech setup in Thailand. So this is one big ecosystem, uh, which we need the tax incentive, for example. In this case, uh, we're talking about uh, capital gain tax. Without the competitive capital gain tax policies, the global VCs, international VCs, venture capital, will not put their funds into the uh, tech startup in Thailand. They will only put their fund in the countries that give the best uh, tax policies over their investments. So this is one of the key efforts of how we are building the ecosystem and the market mechanisms uh, that, that could really uh, um, build uh, our digital workforce at the same time uh, um, incubate uh, the country uh, into the 4.0 economy and help uh, other industry transform as well as disrupt uh, those industry to move forward. Again, this is uh, another, another big area that we feel that uh, Thailand need to be able to, uh, for example, in this case, become one of the uh, technology hub. And uh, that one key enablers is that uh, we really uh, be the place of the tech startups um, that work for the, the, the global market and, and the market in the region, region, regional area. Outside that by that. Um, now we're talking about talents. In fact, the, uh, the tech startup itself also uh, will pull in a lot of talents and also develop a lot of talents from within Thailand as well. Um, but in this case, you know, we're talking about um, school principal. Now, why school principal? To do any kind of transformations, uh, the leadership is the most important. If the leadership have the right mindset and have the right KPI, 
then they are most instrumental. A leadership during the transformation period, usually you call them um, a change agent. Okay, or sometime in the business uh, community, we call them a leader with entrepreneurship. So we, we think that uh, school principal, this is for basic education transformation. Uh, he had to realize that e-learning is what's uh, going to really make the change for the education system and for his schools. And he had to do everything he can uh, to really bring out the best out of the, the digital technology. Uh, that means the, the literacy of the teachers also very important. So this is the, um, the skill sets that both the principal himself, uh, him or herself and the teachers would have to adopt. This is uh, one of the very first people at least understand and open mind. Because, because the, the education system in the, in the next step is going to be totally different from, from what it's has been before. So let me uh, uh, give you the example. Um, you know, this is in the fourth pillar. Child centrics, we heard this a lot. We heard about child centrics a lot, but, but what, what empowered students? What actually empowered students? In the past, um, teachers is the center of knowledge. So uh, during my time in school, the most knowledgeable person is the teachers in the school, not even our parents. But now today, with the connectivities, with all this internet accessibilities, the knowledge is actually abundant. The knowledge is in the, uh, the online world and the communities that are being formed in every verticals and in every micro verticals and in every areas over the internet. And so therefore, the center of knowledge have shifted from the teachers to the, the world of uh, internet. Now with that, uh, the, the role of the teachers change, the KPIs of the teacher change. Uh, instead of being just knowledgeable in the subjects, uh, the teachers actually moving from instructors, giving homework to become a facilitator. Uh, the new skill for the teachers, I have to move toward child psychology how to build values, how to build confidence, um, how to look at uh, uh, security um, and no bullying, for example, so that every child have their space to stand within, within the classroom, within the projects, within the school, just like, uh, when they graduate, they come out into the, to the real society. They come out with confidence and competency. And they are really being support toward their special interest or you know, the, the area of the skills and roles and, and the, the roles that they, they play well as a team members, including as a leaders. So these, these are the skill set and the KPI that need to be changed for the teachers. But to empower students is not only the role of the teachers. To empower the children, uh, uh, we are talking about just earlier, the, uh, the accessibilities um, and the process of the learning. So if, this, if, if the process of the learning have changed from uh, finishing your homework and your reports and taking exam into the endless cycles of raising questions, doing the research, take the actions learning, uh, debate 
with recent and continue to improve and evolve. If this process can be embedded in the education system, then it will be a lifelong learning education system. Then the student will not look, you know, when they become more uh, mature uh, and working in, in the economy, they are not looking for the order. They are not looking to just finish their homework or their assignments, but they always look to solve problems. They always look to, to improve things. And they always are, you know, standing on the right analogy, the right reasons and team working. And if we can change this education system, which I, I would really uh, think that it will move from 2.0 to the 4.0 system. And that is uh, really uh, creating the behavior and the values for the younger generations to, to continue their lifelong learnings and seeing problems as not obstacles, but seeing problem as a, a three meals that they eat every day seeing improvements uh, or innovation as uh, three meals that they eat every day. It become normal. Again, this uh, could really uh, enhance it, uh, the student's uh, way of development. Now, uh, in this case, uh, we, you know, we, we advocating a learning center. It's almost like a, a company having the excellent centers or the, you know, a country having the innovation center, but at the school level, there must be these learning centers with actually based on uh, three sustainable principle. One is social, second is economics, which again, is, which is the wealth and security. And third is the sustainable Abilities or the environmental. These three legs of uh, three foundations of uh, sustainability, all the problem and the possible leap and innovations lies upon these three areas. And this is more applied um, education. It's more of an action learning base so that the students uh, can always uh, stand on this uh, sustainable uh, concept of uh, you know social economics and environmentals and they are the, they will be the one perhaps uh, with our education system 12 15 years from from now being the one who actually evolve and change the world in a sustainable ways with with much more capabilities than myself than you know, many of the people who are joining this seminar, because they they are they, they are just gonna bond with it, and they're just gonna be able to uh, to do many things that we never imagined that we can do. Um, Taken uh, where we actually evolve, you know, from. And I want to say that uh, one of the key enablers again is the accessibilities, is the computer notebook that become one of these uh, enablers, key enablers to empower and create this so-called uh, child-centric uh, ecosystem. Next slide, please. So uh, come to the, the last pillar, uh, about, you know, on the education reform and transformations. It's, it's actually a really uh, embedded this uh, digital infrastructure. I mentioned the, the notebooks and the accessibilities many times. Uh, it's mentioned it here again in the slides. We feel that we already give, uh, you know, the internet to the school, the has been internet, uh, the, the, the accessibility is the infrastructure in Thailand is actually uh, among the top in the world in terms of the connectivity. Um, however, if the students do not have the computer, uh, they, they would still have a huge limitation in their learning. Um, we could overcome many 
of the uh, learning issues, such as, for example, one of the key um, one of the key uh, subjects uh, that that is always been debated in many uh, in many of the uh, seminar is regarding the English language. And people were talking about how can we hire uh, teachers from abroad? How can we actually uh, train the teachers to, to be good enough to teach the students uh, the English language? Because most of the world knowledge are in the English language uh, platform. But if the students have the computer, okay, um, the assignments could be that they watch a Disney movie or a cartoons with the right values, or they could watch uh, uh, educational or documentaries. So for example, if we can aggregate it, uh, thousand of the best of the content mankind have produced, both the movies, cartoons, and documentaries, including entertainment. Um, the learning of the language would not be an issue because for, the, for students, they are very natural. They can absorb all the languages so fast and be able to understand and they can search some difficult words from the internet itself their learning would be uh, exponential. And we might not need every school to have a, a really good English t-shirt. Or we can also aggregate the best English teachers or scientists, science teachers um, in the school through the online basis. And these, the, the teachers or the lecturers uh, are not confined to the Thai only, but it could be from all over the world, because then our students would already understand the, the English language, or going forward, uh, including the Chinese contents. So again, uh, this is the uh, this just an idea of how we see the importance of the digital infrastructure, which included the uh, um, the, the computer for the students. Now, this doesn't mean that uh, we do not in emphasize on the platform. Certainly uh, on the internet world, there are also good content, bad content, good community and bad communities. Uh, bullies, bullying goes on from school to the online societies, to the social network. So all of this, we can actually uh, teach and at the same time apply filtering software for the age group, so that we also can actually walk garden and ring fencing, you know, uh, our younger people at the different ages. Uh, we are not regarding the platform uh, in terms of how to connect between the school, the parents and the communities. The report cards of the students could be a digital report card. The collaboration between the teachers and parents could be almost as, as one. Developing the students with love and security, as well as the, uh, building their confidence in their roles, in their interest, apart from the academic itself. So these, these are the, uh, the, the new dimensions of how we could evolve through the e-learning, uh, through the uh, digital transformation for the school industry, for the education industry. Oh, sorry. So, um, Okay, so this is one of the initiatives uh, are, which is working on by the, the Digital Council of Thailand. Uh, we call it Digital U Universities. 
um, and you know how we actually use the platform uh, to connect all the uh, stakeholders and be able to uh, to to evolve into the uh, the four point uh, I would say uh, learning or you can call it e learning um, which which go which which actually uh, converge uh the education system with also the industries um so let me uh instead of going through the some stats here let me explain to you uh, the, the the ecosystem on how we are evolving uh, building this so-called digital campus called um again okay, this is quite a messy chart but um if you look at it, um, we're talking about the a learning platform that connected with all the, with the industry, uh, with the uh, you know all these uh, uh, tech, digital nomads, freelancers, etc. Um, all the uh, the startups, the government and the e-government, which is a huge platform to build. The talent. Um, uh, this this uh, connectivities with the market is is where we think is the next step because we don't have to separate the education system with how the industry and economy uh, evolved. So uh, if we can uh, actually be able to you start connecting from the from the bottom. You can see that we're talking about the smart uh, uh, universities, smart school, but all of these institutions can contribute to the knowledge and curriculum. And on the on the on the upper uh, deck is the uh, we are talking about industries, governments, etc. Can also join hand into creating the content, contributing the lecturers. And if this all of these programs and content, including um, internships, can be opened and in collaboration with all universities and across the industries, including the government, we are creating the, the ecosystem where uh, the requirement of the market, the requirement of the industry really meet uh, the talent and the talent uh, really uh, be able to uh, to see where is the, the best that they can get the jobs, including uh, uh, building their own business. So, you know, this is almost like a platform that could get the two uh, or, or closer the gap between the market requirement and all the talents that are, are graduating into the market, be it, you know, from higher education to the, uh, you know, vocational schools. Uh, without these connectivities and applying uh, the online and digital technology, crowd technology, um, I think we will be stuck in the 2.0 uh, learning system, which actually are not uh, connected to what the market mechanisms are really required, not connected to what the country and the economy really required, or not even connect to the global economy and the global challenges that require the younger generations uh, to, to actually to engage the younger generations. So this, if this separation continue, just like in Thailand, a big mismatch between uh, the industry um, and also the uh, and, and also the talent from the education system. Uh, not only that there's a big mismatch, but even the industry is struggle to innovate and to transform itself. 
and to disrupt itself. Uh, those also require talents, a younger, genera younger generation talents who have a really, really different mindset and how they approach all the problems and how they approach uh, innovation with, with, with much more imagination than our generation. So um, again, I would like to just uh, end it, uh, my presentation here. I'm over time by a lot, but uh, I hope this is uh, not too much uh, of the information for all the attendees here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christopher Chai. <laughs> well, that's a very um, insightful presentation. I definitely have learned a lot from you. So um, in your presentation, I think Mr. Uh, Supacha has already showed us the future of e-learning and also how can we reach there and also the changes along the way and even the challenges ahead, right? So ladies and gentlemen, if you do have any questions uh, regarding the presentation, please uh, send your questions in the chat so that you know, we can forward to Kun Supacha. Thank you very much for joining us today. <laughs> so our next session will be a panel discussion focusing on the e-learning strategies. So I'd like to invite our um, panel moderator, Quinn Amadi, uh, to um, host this session. So please allow me to say a few words about our moderator, Quinn Amadi. Okay, um, Quinn Amadi is a committee member of e -Led. She has over two decades of experiences in computer, graphics, and digital content industries. She has been invited as speaker, consultant, and judge in many training, conferences, and festivals. Without any further ado, over to you, Queen Amadi. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Infocom Southeast Asia 2022's next session, e-learning strategies, changes, impact, and the future. Um, it's a pleasure to moderate this session today on the very interesting topic of e-learning. So how can we benefit from adaptive online education as a substitute for or addition to the traditional classroom? We will be hearing from three of Thailand's e-learning experts. They will share their perspective on how e-learning reshapes education and the workforce of the future. We will have three brief presentations from the three panelists. After that, we will then have one Q&A session after the end of all the presentations. Let's begin with policy and future trends in e-learning in Thailand. Our speaker for this session is Dr. Thapani Thametha, Associate Professor and Director of Thailand Cyber University Project, or TCU, at the Ministry of Higher Education, Science, Research, and innovation or Macy. TCU acts as a learning resource sharing center and aims to assist all higher education institutes to deliver distance learning via the internet. It also works to ensure that all online courses are of high quality and meet government standards. Dr. Tapani received her PhD in educational communication and technology from Jilawangkorn University, Thailand. She is currently an associate professor at the Faculty of Education, Silapagon University, where she used to be chair of the Department of Educational Technology and a deputy director of the Computer Center. Dr. Tapani, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank um, you. Yes. yes. Thank um, you. Can, can you share with us your thoughts about policy and future trend in e-learning for education in Thailand, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. Actually, I'm so glad that I'm here today to share with all of you with the uh, policy and trend. May I merge that topic into like the only the trend because I merge the policy in the same topic in the trend of e-learning in Thailand. Or we can call that right now, we move the e-learning uh, up in Thailand into like the online learning, online education and massive open online course already. Just like, let me share the slide for this topic, right?
Uh, shall I present with the, the government which under in the past, we under the Ministry of Education, we call this Office of the Thailand Cyber University Project. Right now we move to under the Ministry of Higher Education Science, Research and Innovation or MESI. In the let back in the past and at that time when TCU uh, like that found that in 2005 to initiate a collaboration among the higher education institution. Uh, at that time, we also create the online education courses for e-learning service to the student of all level. And we also provide for the Thai citizen who can access that of free of charge. Uh, and at and, and that time, we have done with the open online courses for like the 800 courses. Uh, and actually, with the... <clears throat> I think that maybe the technology go fast and allow the world. We also change the like the platform for learning management system to be our like the open online courses or we move to be the massive open online courses. We call in short it MOOC courses. So at that time, uh, TCU at we also like the set up for the Thai MOOC platform in 2015. So that this is start in the currently time. We also start in the same time with the, our neighbor, like the Malaysia, Malaysia MOOC and the other in the Asia country. Uh, is our good relationship with Thai MOOC is Korea MOOC, Japan MOOC, and the other in Europe, like the Fun MOOC, Federica MOOC. At that time, we also started this project until now. TCU also start with the platform for our university. The good opportunity in, in that time that we also provide the MOOC, uh, for the center platform in other university, some university they can provide for their own a uh, MOOC platform or online learning platform. That we also also okay for the other university. Example like the small university, they cannot uh, like the provide their platform. They can use our Thai MOOC platform for all level. <clears throat> At that time, we also start that uh, operating plan for Thai MOOC for five year time. This is a six, six, uh, the, the six year already. At that time, just we start to build the pilot system of the e-learning platform. We, we use the open edX in the past. And until now, we also customize with the platform, the build the network to like the create the cooperation with the nine region of the university network and also build a partnership reward in the uh, the lifelong learning for the Thai people. And I think that the good opportunity when we uh in our the world start in that like the COVID-19 period. They also uh, make up the Thai MOOC platform to like the become the higher like the percent high percentage of the people start from the 60, 600, no 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 six thousand of people and so right now until this year we have the member of Thai MOOC like the one point three or point four million of the people to be the member of Thai MOOC. So now we also move our Thai MOOC platform to service provider for the lifelong learning of the Thai people. So that this is my, just like the show you all the story in the past of Thai MOOC. But if we think of the future, let me focus only the 
uh, future trend of the uh, Thai MOOC platform that also provide for the Thai education. I will set for the four ten. The one is political ten. The second is technological ten. The third is environmental trend, and the last social ten. Some trend that for uh, e-learning or MOOC that we have, we also done already. And I I can claim that in the past we have done the we have done some of the uh like the system under the e-learning platform already, but we do the present and we have done some short term for draw our future of our platform, our but platform we can claim that a digital national platform for all Thai people. Let me start for the political trend. Uh, this is under the government policy because in the um, that the uh, the prime minister also announced the, to the parliament in July 2018. They also announced that they will develop a digital learning platform for Thai people. At that time, we also claim that uh, Thai move platform ready to be the national digital national platform for all Thai people. And in the same time, we also support the new learning platform uh, under the national. After we also meeting for all level, actually for the basic education, for the vocational uh, education, that for all higher education, that uh, Thai Mok is under the higher education already. Uh, the CNES, the committee of the CNES, in the session of the higher education, they will support for the Thai MOOC to be the national platform. So I can claim that. The other thing is uh, the Messi also announced the guidelines for the operating the higher education credit bank system in 2000, 2020. This one is uh, like the Credit bank also keep the credit uh, of the all university student and all the worker and all the lives of the people that they can learn, they can keep their experience also. If they are they are the high education, the Messi also announced this um, <clears throat> this uh, criteria already. The one thing is to be our education or Thai university also set up their own credit bank system. Even university, they also use the online education. Very easy way to keep in the credit, digital credit bank system. And online education, this is the one that perfect to use our credit bank system. And this year, Messi will announce the criteria and method and condition for educational management through the, through the ICT or the IT system in this year, maybe in next month. They also are now with the method of educational management to the IT system. They are focused in eight, no, 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 so sorry, 60% that the credit from the curriculum that also level of the curriculum, they use the online uh, method or, or the online way. We also announce and also in the cost level, if some university or some curriculum, they manage their IT in the system, and they also have their own learning management system with the online learning ecosystem, they can, can use uh, their own LMS, 
they can use move they can use like the synchronous learning with the like the Zoom meeting, uh, Microsoft team, or also all level, we call it like a synchronous system. They will uh, call to be our online in that condition. I I think that this one is the all one is policy that can announce uh, some of the <clears throat> platform to merge together with the Thai University. This one that I show you, this is a digital learning platform can continue with the Kun Supachai that show the last slide with the learning platform. If we <clears throat> connect from the OBEC, the OHEC, the vocational and the other e-learning platform, they merge together and some of the MOOC platform for other institution or higher institution or other organization, they merge together. Thai MOOC platform should to be like the, um, we do another with like the uh, MOOC course directly. They, we can search into other organization and when they learn, when they <coughs> collect their credit from other their platform they can put in the central and they can keep in the credit bank and in the future they can uh, like the claim to get the certificate get the degree from other university other institution for the informal not an formal this is a whole picture of the Thai people can keep the uh, credit bank system when they learn from the online learning or the MOOC courses. So I can claim that uh, for the system, the trend of the future of uh, online or e-learning, we call that MOOC course directly, the loaning account, the credit bank system. Some of these project um, of this system we have done already, but some of the system, right, the credit bank system, we have on the way to customize this system to make our platform is like the, on the developing. Some of the cost directly from the Taimu platform can back source from other MOOC from other university, other institution, and other like the alliance, MOOC alliance, example like KMOOC, JMOOC, CMO MOOC, and Malaysia MOOC, and other MOOC. <clears throat> and some of the Thai MOOC cost directly, they can access to other MOOC, then can keep to other uh, MOOC platform, and they also come back to our platform, they can learn and then keep an other credit bank. They use the e-stating bank, they keep our data. And in the past, they can uh, certify from their own platform. So this is picture that the conceptual model can show you that our platform can cover for the all Thai level. And some important of our like the, right now is a Thai people they have also ship in our identity card we have the 18 like the number for the Thai identity we can use this identity to be the number to be the member of the platform for all level this one is our trend that we we will do in this in the near future is they use the <clears throat> other institution move institution move they can access for other institution they are with the same account let's talk back in the data credit bank when they access from the identity so they can claim to other credit bank system, they keep their own account 
this uh, picture for the Thai MOOC ecosystem. We use uh, LMS, we use a uh, cost directly, we have roaming account, we keep when we learn, they keep in the our e portfolio. They keep in the e setting, and we also do the credit bank. Right now, this is a flagship project that I can claim that our trend is technological trend is really clear to move forward our moves into the good future. The, 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 the third of the trend that I can show you with the environmental trend. The environmental trend for the Thai people that use the MOOC platform. Right now, the eight, more than eight, 80 percentage of the Thai MOOC learner in the like the working age. This is a most operation. So this one is mean that when they learn from our <clears throat> platform, they can access, they can access from any device. If in the working, the worker then have their own device their own like the mobile device they can access for free. <clears throat> the environmental, the other environmental that we also uh, do our collaboration with the other neighbor move for in Asia, in uh, Southeast Asia, in Chulo. We also exchange and import for Thai learner. We have a Thai subtitle for we translate into Thai. We also do the MOOC course directly. We also do like the environment for the MOOC work. In July, we also have set the international in e-learning conference on the meta work. We use that, 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 that environment for the people to access our Confront with the, uh, we call the move word. The last ten that I will show you with the social trend that move or e-learning in Thailand can uh, provide. That the social trend is uh, the Thai move can provide for all like the cycle of the people start from like the <clears throat> where they have a student in the, the school and then until we uh, finish the school, they can collect the credit and they, they can get to the university because it's now some university, they ask the student, they have to like the, uh, learn from subject in the university when they have a school student, they can keep the credit into our MOOC platform. And when they start in the university student, they can like the, like some of the course. They cannot enroll in some course because they get the credit in the in at one already. And they when they finish the the fin, finish the when they graduate to be the when they graduate they enter to the like the organization, they can like the work, they also move to be a like the professional development, they can lead skill, upskill, they can uh, get the certificate, they can get the job promotion. When they retire to the retirement age, they can learn from our MOOC platform, they can gain a required skill, they can like the get many, many certificates, many like the, get the knowledge and experience from the online courses. They, so that we can came the cycle is the move or online to be our platform for the lifelong learner for the social. 
the ten is a social. The other thing is we can empowering the collaboration with the organization. They have their own, uh, their own content sample like the King Prapok, Prachatipok Institute of Thailand, the International Health Policy Program, Ministry of Public Health, like the King Prachatip. Uh, like the uh, some of marine forests and the other the, uh, some university marine department Thailand on all level that they have their own content they can connect or they can use like the micro site with the Thai move and they can uh, also keep like the directly to uh, to be our big like the umbrella in the big umbrella or to together. We also website to like the micro site that we can show that not only for the uh, Thai organization, Thai company, when we do with the other university abroad that I mentioned already. Sample like Federica move in Italy, Xinhua move in China, K move in South Korea, Japan move, oh, many, many uh, friends. They can empowering resources in in the chain and share achievement among MOOC provider. But really easy way. And do now we also have the <clears throat> many many courses. Example like the in elderly care that pe Thai people can access from the National Chiang Tung University in Taiwan. Example. We can, they can download the site subtitle. They can change to Thai language also. This one is a photo that show you. And the social uh, trend, another social trend is every year that uh, uh, TCU also set the annual international conference to update, to share uh, knowledge and experience in the area of the online learning in each other. In this year, we also set like the three level, no, no, it's mean like the three track, why the online, on-site and onward, on meta -word. We keep like the, almost the thousand, the party spend or joy this experience. The social ten is important. Right now we also turn back to be our normal life. No, <clears throat> we do only, not only online, but we do both like the branded way online and on site. Uh, TCO is also set the online and on site workshop for support the university and organization that they would like to like the uh, provide the online courses development knowledge, something like that. We will do for the MOOC work like the customize to this system and other that we can provide free of charge for all Thai organization, Thai or Thai university in Thai use institution to use this system for free of charge in the future. This one that show that our kind of uh, workshop that we do both in online and on site. We also keep our like the, our talk activity, right? That we call like the video archive with the Thai MOOC talk activity. We keep in our platform, we like the video on demand in the future for people can use or we can access the experience. This one is like the our is um uh, we do have that I can claim that the Thai MOOC platform can provide for all online education for all Thai people can access this platform to our learning to be Thai with the lifelong learning okay thank you so much for your attention
Um, thank you so much, Dr. Tapani, for a very insightful presentation. Um, now that we have explored more about policy and future trends in e-learning, let's hear more about e-learning in private enterprise perspective and how we can utilize it in the working world. We all hear a lot about upskilling, reskilling. How can e-learning be a part of these concepts? Our speaker for this session is Ms. Kuntirat Pakawat Greiler. Ms. Kuntirat is the president of Thai E-Commerce Association, the CEO and co-founder of Tech E-Business Center Company Limited, and a secretariat of Thai Digital Trade Association. Prior to this, she was part of the top management behind several global e-commerce brands, such as Lazada Thailand, which was acquired by Alibaba, Luxola, which was acquired by Sephora, and C-Discount or C-Mart, which, which was acquired by Billy Yuger. In addition, in her role as a leading woman entrepreneur, she won the Thailand Woman Leaders Award by CMO Asia Awards in 2021 and is now an Honorable Advisory Committee member and judge for the UN Women WEP's award in 2022. Ms. Kuntirat, thank you for joining us today. Um, would you please share your vision with us? How do you see e-learning from a, from a private enterprise perspective? Hi all, thank you so much for um, your, your kind introduction for a lovely lady of moderator. And also like, I'll be grateful to, to be in the panelist to decision and also like, you know, hearing a lot of thought and insightful policy from the previous speakers. So um, as the moderator mentioned, so my session would talk about, you know, implementations, e-learning to the business life, like, you know, even like lifelong learning itself. So uh, let me share my screen quickly. Okay, so all of you have seen the slide perfectly. Okay, so um, my session would uh, would be talk about being digital leadership, you know, with e-learning for growth hackings. So we cannot deny because of COVID-19, you know, like, you know, affect us all, like pros and cons, right? And um, I'm, I'm quite like more than 100% that, you know, most of the new generations know what e-learning is all about, you know? So everyone, each of us um, already like engaged with e-learning, even like since their kindergarten, Thing, you know, and um, even like in our, I mean, world, <laughs> in our generations like X or Y, we in in that time we not even know what e learning is about when we was like kindergarten, but um for the new generations they know since kindergarten, you know how is different that um that would be, and um so uh, so this is of my like presentation we'll go through about you know how we engage um you know studying or learning why you're working or adapting why you in your cities and even like um upskills you like why you are you know explore yourself as the entrepreneurs so e-learning can be everywhere okay and um so just um I mean, like quickly that, um, you know, go through about why I involve this e-learning so much because of um, myself also like keen in education and like technology industries. So when, when I was grow up, I always like have a question like why some session, you know, like I cannot, um, you know, like listen this again. Or repeatedly, why I need to come to the lectures and lectures like at the time only, because you know, like in our choice, we just have like the the lock time from like university saying, from like people saying, but we cannot choose our own time, even our own program, you know, like watching televisions. But in nowadays, in Netflix, VTV, like we uh, VIU and every platforms you can choose uh, your time wisely you can utilize your time you know like to uh, study everywhere you want like and whatever time you want as well and that's why i also be the co-director to the digital work leader um, by tc and also like co-director of the program of um, alibaba master ceo program with alibaba business school and also a lot of <laughs> education program with international um, organizations and also national um, companies. 
I really love about you know how to learn every day of life. Yeah, because you know all the um con I mean consistency of life is never true. Be true. Like everything has to be shown every day. So who gonna survive and who gonna feel happiness? Um, you know, like in every morning is the one who love to change. Is the one who love to develop themselves. So e-learning through e um, lifelong learning um, through private sector's perspective. So here is now a day of you know the, the Thailand as a cleanse and actually among China ASEAN themselves, uh, we can see that I I cannot you know talk about after COVID nineteen because I believe that you no know, um, after COVID nineteen now today is always like you have to live with COVID nineteen right. And um, so self-development, e-learning, life commerce, digital leadership, new occupations, new skill, and um, even like influencers and all the new societies, everything is combined to like, you know, digital life. So, so if you're being entrepreneur, if you be like the company leaders or organization leader or even top management, um, you cannot deny that you have to learn new skill every day. So all these kind of things um, attach with, you know, like um, how, how to choose the program for yourself, how to find the, the time to, to do it. And um, even like, you know, if you have the dream like me who want to change like education system here, um, just do in your, I mean, like, what you can do in capabilities in the part of, you know, making the life better and bringing their, I mean, alternatives, um, programs like better for like the uh, people life. Yeah. And, and, and the lead, the red box is will be like more technology side. It's more like, you know, as the digital master plan and everything is like nothing, um, you know, like you, you can see like, um, they're all involved with digital. Not, nothing cannot involve, right? Everything have to be involved. So um, come here to see some methodologies of like the five essential components of digital transformations. So it's linkage, you know, from the people to results. So it's going to be five steps. So what is the five step? So if you want to change um, your organization or even yourself, you have to take a look at like the, the people, you know, like in, in, in your company, in the clients and how you can, you know, like bring the data up and how could you kind of find, you know, the, the change, the data by like, you know, the running uh, them more to improve it more. So you need technologies to make it happen, right? And after you, you find the data, the digital records or everything nicely, and you use the data science or analytics to find the insight. So after you find the insight of, you know, for example, like, you know, some marketing campaign, you can find like who your target audience and how you're gonna, you know, make them to come back to your stores, detention, your growth. So all of this needs process people and culture. So all the process, people and cultures cannot happen if they're not being digital leaders, right? And after they be in digital leadership, they're going to do actions as you told them to do, or even like do beyond better than you. Uh, but if you're not, you know, like emphasize how to change and enhance the skills, they will cannot be transform your companies or even like, you know, transform all the ecosystem you may have and cannot reach the result that you aim to, to, to have, right? So all of these is uh, the uh, very uh, essential components that have to be together one to five. So th this is like, you know, um, in the, the digital um, era that we are going to be metaverse. We have the buzzword about metaverse a lot, right? And we are like think, okay, when is gonna happen? Um, look at this way. So have you remember like when we have like the new um, phone that the pricing like $3,000? <laughs> Right. So in Thailand, it's like 100,000 baht, something, right? So at that time, people saying like crazy, who's going to be, um, who's who going to have um, these phones, every houses, it's never going to happen. So this is like 15, 20 years ago. But look at nowadays, who not have phones, who not have smartphones. Rally C, right? And, um, yeah, all, all of them have even like 16 egg population of Thailand. We have like the mobile penetrations, like 91 or even 99 million, um, phones, you know, in Thailand and Travis. You can see like every, uh, even like more than like, um, capital head each people. So it's like that now. So now 
if come to metaverse world, you have to rely on Oculus, right? From the Facebook, you have to rely on um, Paris, um, I mean, HoloLens from the Microsoft. So there, um, even Oculus is like the cheaper than HoloLens, but the HoloLens is quality is, you know, very tremendous. So it's like the price um, $3,000 something. So it's what like that phone, <laughs> 10, 15, or even 70 years ago. So there are all their, I mean, like this, um, I mean, e equipment is going to be every home, every house in the next 10 and 15 years. Trust me. So, so that's why right now we talk about how to embrace all the digital and e-learning to yourself, your company, and even like your children. So here the world, uh, the world class of leadership. So the world class of leadership, you know, everyone knows like Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Satya Nadella, and even Elon Musk. So, so all of them is, you know, like in, I mean, in the technology com company side and um, even like the stock is up and down, but um, their companies will survive last long because um, they believe that all their e-learning and kind of uh, new innovation knowledge is very important to their employees. And even like ACSI, you can see the Jack Ma from Alibaba, like Daniel Chang. Uh, right now, he is the CEO of Alibaba, Bill Gates, and even Steve, uh, Steve Jobs that we still miss him. So all of this leadership is also like, you know, emphasize, you know, how uh, important to learn by doing, um, to learn by your experiences, and even share knowledge to the people. Um, let, let me share slide quickly, please. So here is like the world of uh, leadership competency. So, so all of them, we have something in common, right? That's why they are being the leadership of the world. Embracing diversity, um, you know, like empathy and compassion, digital techno savvy, growth mindset, visionary, communication and unitality. So I also have like their very, Okay, so here come to the, um, I mean, like their leadership digital in Thailand, you know, how like we motivate like our employees and how we motivate like our teamwork to, to realize that e-learning is very important, to realize about lifelong learning. So here we are. So we, um, I have like the, the fortunate talking in where we had a clubhouse with the um, Kulawit. Um, I think you guys know like Kuntap, he's a CEO of Mission to the Moon and also CEO to Sijan. And also like Kun Gong Kaviwood, like their owner of like Bad Bantat Klung is very famous, the Facebook page in Thailand. And also Kun Mimi, um, their CEO of Tech Stars. And also like um, uh, Kun Sompo, like he also like the top management to Pautung before and also like the um, former head DTAC accelerators. So here five of us, we talk about, you know, how to be the digital leadership. And we got a lot of, like thousand or 2000 people like, you know, come to listen to the session, I think like their previous year. So Kulavit, he also talked that um, the digital leadership who, you know, like, um, know very well that he is supposed to not be burdened to his employees is the key. <laughs> and also um, the capability to do like negotiate with their, their partners and their, and their stakeholders. And also, you know, how to um, can find um, their very skillful people, like the very, very uh, strength, um, you know, like all the people come together and make the team stronger. Uh, for the Kun Mimi from Texas, she also said like the, the, I mean, the skill that people need to have is mindset, skill set, and tool set. So all of this, you know, um, being the knowledge that you can find in the cloud and like everywhere that, you know, all the free certificates, um, the paid certificate, you know, the more you would like to, to learn is, you know, more you're going to gain. Also from Kun Kuntong Kawiwood, um, right now he's the CEO of SCB Tenek as well. And he also mentioned about um, experiment more and also have the empathy. And all these kind of hard skill and you know, soft skill have to be combined in order to be the very good digital leadership. 
for um, come back from my perspective. So you have to be like respectful partnership, you know, like take and um, take and give and also like win-win solutions. And the next is about like problem solving is come for the doer practitioners and also like the progressive employee is really important for the young generation. You have to um, think about the reward more than like uh, punishment. So all of us, you know, like um, talk about this, I go to like, you know, just the one systematic thing is, is about who gonna win the market, who gonna come to the top management level is always the one who keen to learn every day of life. So um, so that's why like I, I and Kun Lovit and also like Kun uh, Mu Ukbi, he's also like the CEO of, um, I mean, a lot of um, uh, startup like very renowned, such as like Ukbi, Joy Lada, and also uh, 500 Tuk Tuk, he also be like the co-founder in Thailand, Accelerators and VC. So we, we come to think about, you know, we should you know, um, combine like all of our knowledge to help more people to be the digital leadership, to um, utilize their skills uh, more better. And, you know, like to, to learn between like the peers in the class and to learn from the experienced speakers and also, you know, have the e-learning of every processes. So this is some of the success to study. Um, start, I mean, like the case study that I would like to talk about is a successful journey um, with their, you know, like their digital entrepreneurship mindset. We have like 20 C-level expert and success CEO, you know, to come to talk to the session and, and also like making their very strong networking. So we have like more than 40 digital skills acquired like, you know, after the completion of the program, like all of these have to learn in the cloud itself and also like online. So it's going to be hybrid. So that's why um, I think I think it's it, it's not that different, you know, like between like learning from like the offline class and hybrid. Um, I mean, like the offline card, like past years ago, because all the technology is better now. And um, it, it just like lack of the, the touch, you know, like the, the, the people that, you know, can, can be talking and playing more rather like very really serious, you know, through the online, like we are now quite serious, right? <laughs> so I will try to wake you guys up more, but not technical problem. So we have like a lot of speakers, you know, like come from like very renowned um, um, companies and organizations, um, enterprises, like 100 Fortune companies and, um, you know, like public company limited. Yeah, so I'm just like skip it. So you just see, so we have like right now is the third pro, um the the third program that we developing. Uh, yeah, and um um right right now we're gonna have the third generations of um the digital work program by TEC. So if you would like to see more, just like QR code like the 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 left hand side corner of this slide. And so that the part of top management being the entrepreneurship, you know, but come to the your team work and or even like you know your niece your nephew your children your friends your junior co-workers so how are you going to develop them to be like you know um they're the one who are ready to work or even like the one who like can uh, be promoted promoted to their career. So we gonna we also develop their program just called like the digital work for like you know their start career to mid career. So all of this we have been grooming more than 2000 alumni right now. So we're not grooming only um, digital skill, we're grooming business skill at like business etiquette that we work every day, like, you know, how, uh, how you engage with people, how you talk and how you think this very important too. And also like essential skill, like English skill and, um, you know, logical skill. So all the cultivation program is can, um, is cannot be decided if lack of e-learning because everything is like linked together. We believe in heart and science have to be together to bring the education better itself. Yeah. So just a quick plan for you to see, like, you know, um, how we grooming the people, like the 2000 people to, to get them a job. So, um, from our research, like internally, we see like more than 60% get the job immediately after the program and uh, like 42 points. 86% is being, being interviewed like um, from like big companies from our like 50 company networks. And also 
hundred percent, you know, like get like a better resume, like better gesture, um, how to engage with their coworkers and how to, I mean, like uh, talk with their supervisors and even like how to um, bring the revenue up from the clients. So all of that things, you know, like we we very um, tailor me to, to make sure that the results can be implemented very well. And also, um, we also select the people to come to the program as well, because we would like to make sure that they're keen to, to learn. Because sometimes, you know, people think um, that, you know, some free thing or some like small free thing is like not important, but actually it's a lot of investment behind. So we would like to um, seeking like the ready fish to come to the pool and, you know, bring, bring them to, um, I mean, to, to the next level with like, their their heart and head and body and shoulder is ready and so we we have like the assessment you know to assess them everything is through like online and e-learning you know and also like we even like check their soft skill through the key 16 personalities and also a lot of case for class and um, so we have like the system to to you know like bring them um, to see like you know how how they good in this like how they've been raised and also like um, how they have skill um, you know like that being they were off to the scores like before and after and you know all, all the kind of thing because we believe that if we help them groom them to get a job they're gonna survive you know to like like do this uh, community better. So we have a, a lot of speakers from Kuken, uh, I mean, certified, Light certified, like um, Alibaba certified and Facebook and a lot of things, a lot of angles, yeah. So if you want to uh, be assessed, I mean, like for the digital um, assessment that we, um, our experts um, are make it by our, um, our, our expertise and experiences. So you can like test it for free. Yeah, but um, it, I think it's gonna be like more in Thai and English. Yeah, I mean, combine two languages. Okay, so an, another case that we'd like to show you is about the update class that we also like um, produce, um, just released, I think this month, and you will see it's more like in the next quarter. Uh, like, so actually in their uh, market, you can see a lot of e-learning is better every day. And also even Thai MOOCs that um, the previous uh, lovely lady speakers also talking about already. And we also have a lot of, you know, like chance for you in the market. Um, update class is going to be one of the red ocean market that going to help you, um, you know, like being better in your career. So, for example, we're going to have like, you know, seven um, um, top management for to help you to find like the right recruitment people to our, your company, um, to find the right tools and technology to, you know, like make it happen for um, your products and services. And also like, um, and for example, another topic is about how you gonna, you know, like manage your generation gap in your company and also like, you know, motivate them, inspiring them, uh, make them come to, um, to, to work and, you know, like to sacrifice for the companies better. Yeah, so um, we- uh, Miss Kuntirat, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but we have about one minute left. Yeah, I'm gonna crossing my okay. remarks. Okay, thank you so much. And also we have like the free of like the e-learning and digital marketing vocabulary 101. So we can, you can check it out. Yeah, so through the QR code as well. So um, a part of this that you're gonna, you know, like lifelong learning, we are from Thai e-commerce associations. We also doing like, um, 31 session of life commerce and I mean like um, no need to to buy things from us okay <laughs> but uh, we're gonna be like very expertise um, of speakers to come to the session and also like can help you to know more about the digital world and all the digital marketing all the things that can help you better skills yeah so um, we circulate from like the our past uh, achievement, you know, like incremental revenue, like generate maybe 1 billion more households. But um, kind of the thing that we would like to say to you is that um, the more you learn, the more you gain. And this is very important. Is we, We're going to have like the new life on the e-commerce Thursday. You can see from our Thai e-commerce uh, association fan, fan page. 
So what we try to do and I try to do is like bringing the well, um, the well-being of the people better. So this is also the quote, um, remarkable from our King Pumi Pum Dunyade. So he believed on like the stabilities and the security of the countries. So people cannot have this if like they're not have like the better life of cost living, they're have to be covered that. So all the things gonna happen, you know, like to learn more anymore so uh, this is just like the final crossing this map that i would like to give to you all for today just um keep in touch with us like what um, we are the line oa like at sign tsd world thank you thank you so much miss kuntirat for your compelling session i believe we all have learned a lot today thank you again for sharing with us um, now let's hear about one of the most important elements that drives e-learning, the technologies behind it. Today we are very fortunate to have Dr. Sushai Thawatsatian joining us. Dr. Sushai is a dean at the School of Digital Media at Sibatum University. He is also the founder and chairman of CDX and MediaX Metaverse. Dr. Sushai is a pioneer in tech education and entrepreneurship. Over the years, he has helped nurture many successful tech companies. His current endeavors include building metaverse platforms for education and business. His main focus is in the process of real-time AI-driven upskill reskill systems. Dr. Sushai, thank you so much for being here today. Hello. Um, can you please share with us your vision for future technologies of e-learning? All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm uh, Suchai, okay? And uh, uh, today I will talk about uh, three very important topics, okay? Uh, the first one is the SCORM technology. The second one is the smart classroom. The third one is metaverse classroom, okay? There are three related topics. Um, you see? Okay, SCOM, over the last 20 years, the single dominant technology standard is the SCOM. No one talk about the SCOM today, okay? And SCOM stands for Charitable Content Object Preference Model, okay? It is a standard created by the Advanced Distributed Laboratory from the Department of Defense, okay, U.S. Army. The one oh, that soldier to all right. Let's continue. Okay, this scrum is really important. Okay, it's the standard that dominate the market for over twenty two years. We still use the scrum right now. Okay, MOOC is another breed, another thing. Okay, this the, the thing is that scrum is standard. There are three components in this standard. The first one is the packaging. Once you decide the, the uh, content, you do the packaging. And then you can transfer this content to run in any LMS that is designed based on the SCOM standard. Okay, so it's very important. Interoperability. The second one is that there's a runtime component. Okay, the runtime is very important. The runtime is to solicit the behavior of the user. Okay, in this case, the SCOM can track how long we stay in, in the lesson, okay? And then we can also uh, know the score, single score, when we do a test, okay, we know the score, okay. We know the pass and fail. There's a few things that we can get from the user when using the content, okay. And this, uh, this is the score 1.2. Then in the year 2004, they come up with score 2004. The other component here is the content sequencing. A content, a curriculum is basically a tree. There are different learning paths, okay? You can set and do a fantastic, wonderful learning uh, 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 paradigm there, okay? But it is very difficult. It's not widely used, okay? And this is a SCOM. We still use the SCOM today, okay? Moodle is one of the examples that is very popular. It is LMS, okay? All the corporate world, all the educational world, they still use SCOM. However, the problem is that there are this many, many learning material in, in, in the social world. In, you have the ebook, virtual reality, 
you have the augmented reality, okay? You have the serious game. You have this and that, okay? We cannot get any information from those learning material. It's really difficult. Also, there's online learning and there's offline learning. When we are doing offline learning, we have some behavior that, that the uh, uh, learner provider want to know, the content developer want to know, okay? We, we cannot get, get that. So the SCOM standard committee, they come up with a new, a new, Paradigm, okay, new, new stuff called uh, XAPI. Okay, XAPI, they call it Tin Can, T I N C A N, Tin Can API. Tin Can XAPI is not widely used right now. It's, very, it's, it's a fantastic, wonderful uh, concept, okay. XAPI can solicit, okay. Uh, learner behavior from any learner learning situation from another from YouTube. If you use it, how can you get the learning behavior? When you use the ebook in another portal, how can we use? We know that the student learn from what page, how long they stay in the ebook. Okay. When you switch from from a PC to a mobile phone to learn the material, how can we know that? XAPI can do that. Okay. Now the problem is that really limited number in the in in our MS in the world has implemented the XAPI. In Thailand, we have implemented one LMS right now with XAPI. To make XAPI work in the LMS, okay, you, you have to uh, get all the people in the environment who provide the content to implement XAPI too. Okay, in a closed environment, it's not that hard. So in, in doing so, we can get the real behavior from all the learner in any platform, okay? So this is something that fantastic, something that we have to pay attention to. This is the future, okay? MOOC is not the future, I, I tell you that. Unless, because MOOC is one way, you just look at the video, okay? You learn from that. You provide very limited feedback to the provider. You don't know if they they are watching the MOOC or they are sleeping. We don't know. We don't really know. So I tell you that this is the future. Anyone who want to uh, get to the to be the next billionaire have to do XAPI. Okay. Now the the next one that I want to talk about is the smart classroom. Okay. Uh, right now, one problem with the uh, uh, with the classroom, okay, because uh, some people will be online, some people will be in class, okay. Now, how can we make the online people look like as if or he thinks that he is in the class, okay? The problem is that we cannot really see what's going on in the class. We don't. We can cannot really hear anything in the class with Zoom with whatever online uh, synchronous learning. It's not possible unless we implement additional mechanism to do that, okay? And here we come up with a concept. Basically, this is the, uh, the concept that promoted by Huawei too, okay? So in this, we implement a tracking device camera to track the movement of the teacher, of the student, we install more microphone, in the classroom so that we can hear everything. The student on the other end of the world can see what's going on and to think that he's in the room. So this is a basic idea of a hybrid classroom. Okay, now we, we implement other automation, make the classroom so smart. Smart means that we have to use data to manage the classroom. And that's easy right now, okay? Uh, many, many different wonderful things can be uh, implemented. So this is the future of the real smart classroom. Okay, so this is the second one. Right now we have implemented this, okay, in many versions in Thailand. Okay, the third one that I would talk, want to talk about is, okay, virtual classroom. Metaverse is a kind of virtual classroom. You can implement a class look like this, 
the implementation basically the mechanic of doing that is the you use maybe uh, unreal engine or other game engine you can do that okay uh, to to make it this one is uh, using unreal engine so uh, it look like a real classroom okay. now to do this you have to think about that what kind of situation that you want you want to have an auditorium you have the speaker it, it, over there the speaker can be a real person from another location. Okay, we can do this, okay, through the virtual mechanism right now. Okay, so this is another thing. The, uh, uh, we can incorporate the content, okay, the augmented reality or the virtual reality to teach uh, the practical, online experience in doing real thing, okay? Practical laboratory, we can do that, okay? Uh, this is something that in the near future, okay? Or you have an auditorium. The speaker here can be a real person projected from another location too, not necessarily an avatar, okay? And all these people can be in this room learning something. Or in a class presentation, examination, you have the student in front of the class, you can rest your hand, whatever, to do the interaction. Uh, you have a dissertation exam, you can do, do this online, okay, in a virtual classroom setting. So uh, I asked you how to do that in reality, how to implement this mechanism. Okay, um, it can be done. We, we are doing it right now. We have an experimental uh, virtual classroom on, on Spatial. Okay, platform is done. We can connect the API to outside. We can we can uh, bring in a lot of content, not just build in. So uh, in the takeaway today is that the future of Scrum is here. It will stay with us, and we are going to use XAPI, LMS, to implement the system that we can know the behavior of the learner. Like you don't know, you, you can implement a national platform. Everyone uses it, but how do you know that everyone is really learned from the platform? Exit API can tell you that. Okay, the classroom, okay, the physical classroom is still very important. So we need to implement a smart hybrid classroom. Okay, not just smart classroom. Okay, and uh, the far future, a little bit, uh, we will have the XAPI LMS inside the hybrid classroom inside the meta world. This is the ultimate future, okay, in the this in this decade. Okay, this is what uh, I can uh, provide the information that I think is very important commercially and academically for everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sushai. That was very informative and fun. Um, we have come to the end of our webinar. And on behalf of Infocom Southeast Asia and the e-learning association of Thailand, I would like to express my gratitude to all the speakers for, them, for their valuable contributions today. Um, next, let's return the stage to Sami, the program director of Infocom Asia for the closing remarks. Thank you very much, Chris Amadi, and thank you to uh, all the panelists for spending time to prepare the slides. Uh, I believe all, all these slides are very valuable, even though we have a little bit of a tech issue, but I believe that uh, attendees will be keen to look at uh, the slides again, all of you have prepared. Thank you very much for that. Thank you for all the valuable insights you all have shared with us. All right, we're at the end of the webinar. so. Uh, I would like to mention one last thing that, uh, you know, this year we're providing uh, all the exhibitors a uh, V-boost, a virtual boost. And we do have a video to show you how you can uh, uh, leverage on V-boost to find the solutions you're looking for and how V-boost can help you to meet the right people during the show in November 2 and 4. All right, um, um, Kim, can you help to play the video? With so many exhibitors at Infocom Southeast Asia, who should you meet? With limited time, 
How would you identify exhibitors with solutions that match your needs? Start your search with vBooth. Visit the official show website and select your industry and solutions of interest. Instantaneously, you will get a list of selected exhibitors. Learn more about each selected exhibitor and their solutions through their vBooth, enriched with engaging multimedia content. Shortlist exhibitors with solutions that best match your needs. Send requests to meet at the show. vBooth Making your visit to Infocom Southeast Asia a highly efficient one like none other. Now choose the industry solutions you're interested in, and then you can make appointments with the solution providers even before the show. So when you join the show on uh, November 2nd to 4th at the show floor, you are able to have more meaningful discussions with the exhibitors. All right, with all that, I would like to thank everybody again for staying with us until now. And I hope to see you again in our next webinar on um, 22nd September. Thank you and goodbye.